leave him. Trust in God and he will help you. From Romans, we know all things work for good for those who love God, who are called according to his purpose. And a verse from the gospel that was proclaimed that day was from John, his last discourse at the Last Supper. It was not you who chose me, but I who chose you and appointed you to go and bear fruit that will remain so that whatever you ask the Father in my name, he may give you. This I command you, love one another. So, briefly, I had gone through um, f formation in the Diocese of Brooklyn, and I had left that formation process. And not knowing what would happen, what was going to happen for my future, I had a couple of things that I was doing, uh, not settling on anything until I did land after several things that I did do. I landed a job in corporate management. I have no business background. I couldn't even type. And I can remember at the interview telling my two directors, they were the managers of the regional office and the district office, but they were very... Um, they were happy that I was so green. <laughs> they wanted to train me. But I, I do remember that um, I had heard that the Holy Father was coming to the country for the very first time. John Paul II was coming to my city of New York. And I was quite annoyed or well, disappointed that it, I knew if I would have been in the seminary, I would have been doing something with the venue that they had in Manhattan and Queens and in Brooklyn. Well, I was annoyed. But I remember that morning um, getting out of the Long Island Railroad in Penn Station. That's when I lived out in Long Island. I would take the train into Manhattan. And I was really annoyed as I'm trying to get to work, which was on Park Avenue, that there was this huge gigantic crowd not making its way up the steps, getting onto 7th Avenue, and I couldn't understand why. And as I nudged my way through the crowd, I realized that there were white, I saw there were white barricades at the curb, and we could, no one was allowed to cross the, the avenue. And then like it dawned on me, ding dong, ah, the Pope. The Pope is coming to speak right above us at Madison Square Garden. He was speaking to a youth rally at the youth rally, and he was coming down from the, the, the St. Patrick's Cathedral where they just prayed morning prayer. So we were standing in the rain. I was a little annoyed, and here I wedged my way to the corner, really wanting to cross the avenue and get to work when I saw the motorcade come down and there was John Paul II sticking his body outside of the roof with Cardinal Cook holding an umbrella over him. And as the motorcade turned, I was about 10 feet away from him. So that was interesting. <laughs> I, um, I didn't realize you know, how God does work his way. I did... Um, enjoyed doing what I was doing in, in this business, and I decided that there was a, something happened to me that made me change to think again of the priesthood. So I did make application. I was accepted back to the seminary after several years, and I found myself very uncomfortable, very strange, back at a place where um, I had to put on this mode of you know, being like a subservient student when I was making money and I lived on my own and was on my own and traveled and had all this, but I just remembered asking God for a sign that if I made the right decision, that if I did go back to the seminary, that it was something that he wanted and not me. 
And I remember um, I got a call from my office and they told me, Vito, we said, you're gonna invite, you, we wanna invite you to the Christmas party. Okay, so I said, well, maybe this is the sign God I had, that I've been asking for. And I told him if I finished my exams, which I did, and I, I got into the tent, I got dressed in jacket and tie and a suit like I always did for so many days, for so many years. And I went into Manhattan on the train um, from Long Island and I got into the restaurant, everybody went crazy to see me. I was really happy. I knew, I said, maybe this is the sign that I asked from God. I know I'm leaving the seminary again. I'm coming back to the office. And they told me you know, how much they missed me. But I also remember leaving the restaurant that night. I was feeling a little happy. <laughs> it's Christmas time. Um, and I was walking back to Penn Station. And believe it or not, which I just realized only today, it was very close to the actual corner in which I had seen John Paul II turn years before. That I don't know what happened, but something came over me. I do know that. And I stopped. There was nobody around. It was like 11.30 at night on a weekday. It was cold. It was in December. And I just had this sense of peace that descended upon me. And I knew it wasn't me. I knew that it was God who wanted me. And I always said, oh yeah, I want to be a priest. And people would say, did you get the calling? Oh yeah, I got the call. Like God called me on a phone and said, yo Vito, I want you to be a priest now. Oh yes, Lord, I'll be a priest. I don't know, none of that happened. It wasn't that way. <laughs> It was like all of that that I knew, all the theology that I was taught, all the philosophy that I was taught, just went right out the window. And there I was alone. And God definitely took hold of me. Years later, as I was ordained and was assigned to several parishes, um, in one of the parishes I was assigned to in Queens, we found that the Holy Father was returning to America 16 years later. And he was coming right near where I was assigned in Queens, near the, near the JFK airport. It was at the Aqueduct Raceway. And I had been asked to be one of the masters of ceremonies at that event. Wow, I thought, 16 years ago, I thought I would never be in the presence of the Holy Father doing something on a visit. Who would ever think he would come back again? And now I was chosen. I, know, I thought it was all right. I mean, I had to bring 50 people that were chosen to receive Holy Communion from him. He only would give communion to 50 people. And I remember this whole thing, the whole, all the difficulties we had in the screening, the security, the practicing. And here we are sitting outside. It was supposed to rain. It rained the night before, but they told us you can't wear anything. The sun came out unbelievably that day. And there I was, the time for communion. I had to lead these people up this huge stage that they had created at Aqueduct to the Holy Father. And believe it or not, it dawned on me. I'm like, a, it dawns, a lot of things dawn on me at the last minute, really dense. It dawned on me that, duh, I guess I was going to have to receive communion. <laughs> I was thinking that I was just going to make these people receive, you know, pass them, lead them up there, pass like a good master of ceremonies, but I had to receive communion. I'm, I'm a priest. I was at mass. Come on. And I didn't know what to do. I was so stupid. And I remember standing in front of him and he placed the host. I opened up my mouth. He placed the host on my tongue. Okay. A month later, we had this party where the bishops thanked everybody for and the priest was going around giving out papers and um, envelopes. And he said, oh, you know, this is uh, some photos of the, of the event. Okay, that was nice. I'm thinking the Pope is going to be up there at the altar with his hands out like this. You know, very nice. I go home and I open up the envelope and there's my mug in front of the Holy Father 
with my mouth open, receiving communion. Like, what? So sister called me and told me about this night, and I come here on the night that we remember this great man. How strange, he's had some effect on my life somehow, some way, in a little minor way, a minor way, but moments, little moments. My brothers and sisters, be open to the surprise of God in your life. God comes to reveal himself to us only in the moment. We only have now. It seems in his divine providence, everything leads up to that moment. But you and I cannot see that. You and I, many times, we're so concerned about everything else, we don't realize what is right before us. St. John Paul II said, the way Jesus shows us is not easy. Do not lose heart. The steeper the road up a mountain, the faster it rises for us to see ever wider horizons. There were times when I had left the seminary way I had stopped going to church. I would never believe that would ever happen to me. I didn't receive the sacraments. I stopped talking to my spiritual director, to all my priest friends and all my seminarian friends that were now priests. And I just was concerned, I guess, about me. Yes, there were a lot of mixed feelings that I had towards God and towards the church and my faith. But I do remember there was something very drastic and that is because there was a time when I didn't care. And apathy was just what it was. I think that was probably worse than anything, that I just didn't care. I wasn't angry anymore. I wasn't annoyed. I just was apathetic about God and about my faith. So we hear the words of John Paul II again. We are not the sum of our weaknesses and our failures. We are the sum of the Father's love for us and our real capacity to become the image of his Son. Today, when I was looking at the, I looked up on the computer information about John Paul II's address to the youth that were at Madison Square Garden. I never read it before. I remembered one thing, that when the, peop when the young people were singing, that he was sitting in his chair, they had captured this on the newsreel and they spoke about it, that the Holy Father was leaning over and he was making a strange noise. And people couldn't understand what that was, but they, did, they explained it that in his hometown, among the townsfolk, mothers who watched their children and were proud of them made this sound to them in affection and tenderness. And here was this pope, a man, expressing this tender affection for the world to see. We have to be aware that God is bigger than who we are and what we're going through at the time we're going through it. Whether we're confused and mixed up, whether things did not turn out the way you planned them to be, I thought my life was going to be this way. <laughs> I never in a million years would have thought I would go back to the seminary. I never thought I'd be a priest. And certainly, I never thought that I'd be here Never. Coming to Washington, I'm a diocesan Brooklyn priest. I pledged my allegiance to the Bishop of Brooklyn. I knew and I did serve in Brooklyn and Queens. That's where it was. I was a parish priest. I was happy about that. And this, this position, this calling came. 
And I told my bishop, I'll do what you asked me to do, but I want to come back. Can I come back? Can I be a pastor? When, <laughs> can I do it when I finish? And he said, sure, Vito, but somehow I don't think you're coming back as soon as you think. And I said, why are you saying that? Here I am, it's nine years that I'm here. I come on this day in which this man has affected my life in three moments when I wasn't in the seminary, when I was a priest, and today, standing before you at his national shrine that did not exist. Even when I came here to Washington, this was not the national shrine of John Paul II. At that morning, on Wednesday, October 3rd, 1979, when I was outside in my suit waiting to cross the street to go to work, John Paul told those, peop those young people, when you wonder about the mystery of yourself, look to Christ who gives you the meaning of life. When you wonder what it means to be a mature person, look to Christ who is the fullness of humanity. And when you wonder about your role in the future as his disciple, look to Christ. He will fulfill your potential. I'm still looking to Christ. I'm still asking a lot of questions. I still have a lot of fears. I still make the wrong choices. I kind of resisted even this assignment. But you know, sitting in that pew, I knew this is where I wanted to be. A great saint that I really admire and I have prayed many over his readings and prayers, St. Francis de Sales sums it all up so perfectly. When all shall fail us, then God will take care of us. And then all will not fail us because we shall have God who is and must be our all. Salutaris hostia, qui celi panis hostium, bella premunt hostilia, darobur fer auxilium, unitri 
Merciful Lord, we adore you in this blessed sacrament. Hidden Lord, here and now with us in the mystery of the Eucharist. Lord, we thank you for inviting us here. Thank you for reminding us about your presence with us here and now, touching our hearts here and now. May your Holy Spirit open us to receive you. To recollect our mind, our heart, and to be able to listen to listen to your calling tell us Lord what do you want from us guide us Lord show us the path to holiness Lord, we are longing for the union with you. We are thirsting, Lord, for your continuous presence in our lives, here and now and forever. We are yours, Lord, and you are our everything. <laughs> 